first lady to first lady, um, my first lady. <laughs> Scripture lesson I would like to lift up for you. Sometimes you have to preach out of your experience. Greenville knows that my family and I have gone through a trying season. So if you would, uh, Bow your heads with me before I even give you the scripture. Turn to God, our Father. We pause to acknowledge your sovereignty. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> you are God all by yourself. Yes, yes, you are. Have your way in this place and all that you have already done. Speak to my heart that my heart by your grace would speak to the hearts in this place. Meditations of this heart, the words of this mouth, let them be found pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, you are our collective strength. You are everyone's redeemer. Use us to your glory and for your benefit. The precious name of he who is our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, Yahshua. Hamashiach. We ask it together in the body of Christ here assembled on this 10th annual class leaders day. Said together, Amen. Amen. <coughs> Paul's letter to the church of Corinth, 2 Corinthians. Fourth chapter. I would like to read the first verse and the eighth and the ninth verse. Second Corinthians chapter four. Verse one says, therefore singing we have this ministry as we have received mercy. We faint not. Read that again. Therefore, seeing that we as class leaders have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Mm -hmm. King James Version, verse 8 and 9. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Life Application Bible says it a little bit different. It says, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but not crushed nor broken. We are perplexed because we don't know why things happen the way they do. But we don't give up and quit. We are hunted down, but God has never abandoned us. Knocked down, but get up again. That's why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our inner strength in the Lord is growing every day. Look at your neighbor for me. Look at your neighbor for me. Amen. Don't scare him. Just look at him. Just look at him. <laughs> Would you say to them, I'm fired up. I'm fired up. And I'm never giving up. And I'm never giving up. Look on the other side, say, I'm fired up. I'm fired up. And I'm never giving up. Sister Churches, brother. I, I can't 
came in in the lobby and I saw this purple all on the table and I saw the class leaders and they had all this but the brother I saw him in the bathroom with the purple tie I said y'all got something going on with purple <laughs> we had women's day today our program was <laughs> you can tell that the choir has got shades of <laughs> ladies in the audience it was ladies day they have open I don't know something about that Purple. Yes, it is. I'm leave that alone right now. <laughs> Purple is a powerful color. Yes, it yes, is. It is. it is the color of the Lenten season. <laughs> but it is also a color of transformation. Mm -hmm. When I think about where God has led us and is leading us, mm -hmm. I think there's some changes on the way. My Lord. When Paul wrote this letter, in 55 AD, the atmosphere in the country of southern Greece, Acadia, it was volatile, corrosive, and combative. He had enemies in the country and enemies in the church. Come on now. They were questioning Paul's authority as an apostle, attacking his character on a daily basis. In the midst of all of these aggravating circumstances, Paul declares in the first verse of this fourth chapter, 2 Corinthians, he says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we should faint not. Greater Bethel, Greenville Memorial, all of us as believers, all of us as officers, especially class leaders, we have a responsibility to allow God to use us in his ministry. Amen. We are the body of Christ. Yes, we are his feet and we have to go when he asks us to go. Amen. We are his hands that are supposed to reach out to others to offer help, healing, and comfort. That's right. Amen. When this chapter was written, the Bible says that Paul was zealous, which means he was fired up about telling his story. He had been converted on the Damascus Road. He was talking about his journey. And if you think about it, anybody got a story to tell? If I pulled you to the side, would you have a few things that you could tell me about what God has done in your life? We got an interesting story because we live in Trump America. <laughs> Don't get quiet now. <laughs> when the Holy Spirit put this scripture on my heart because of the things that my family has gone through this week, I, I had to just think that the Lord was just sending me here for this 10th annual day to encourage these class leaders and let them know God knows the work and the ministry that you have been doing. Even in an atmosphere in this country. Y'all see it every day you turn the television on. It's volatile, corrosive, combative, dysfunctional, and yes, corrupted. Been telling my Bible study for the last year and a half that ever since Joel 2.28, when we've seen those blood moons, we know that this is a season where everything that's been done in the dark is <laughs> coming out. Whatever you get under the table is coming out on top of the table. The truth is the light. The truth is coming out. The truth about the so-called White House National Emergency, the truth about Trump Gate, Paul Manafort, my God, mama, mama ain't going nowhere. Somebody say amen. amen. The truth about stealing boats in District 9. The truth about white privilege where wealthy parents bribe people in college. Everything that's been done in the dark. Starting to come out. Look at your neighbor. I'm sorry, I can't help it. I'm gonna act like. 
pastor told me to act like I'm at home, I'm going to act like I'm at home. Look at your neighbor and say, we ain't seen nothing yet, child. We ain't seen nothing yet, child. We just seen the tip of the iceberg. So we have enemies in the community. Enemies around us. Questioning our authority. Even questioning our beliefs. But in the midst of all of these aggravating circumstances, I repeat what Paul told the Corinthians, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. I've been knocked down, but it's not how many times I get knocked down. It's how many times I get back up. Can I be transparent? Let me tell y'all. We go into this ministry. We are troubled on every side. But not distressed. Perplexed, but not in despair. July 10th, 2014. Then my wife had breast cancer surgery. We had to recover from what I know is one of life's gut punches. Anytime you hear cancer, you just get a little nervous. We knew then and we know even better now that life indeed is fragile and precious. And I want to declare among you and before her that my wife is my shero. Y'all say that. That's my He said, but be of good courage, as I have overcome the world. If you're still in the world, guess what? You're still going to have some haters. You're still going to have some folk backbiting. You're still going to have some backstabbers. You're still going to have those folk. We're going to continue to put pressure on you. No matter what your status, no matter what your rank, no matter what you say you're going through. Some of us have to just say, life happens. Life happens. But I'm so glad trouble don't last always. There are four principles, four principles, four principles that are in this scripture that I want to lift up very quickly that every believer should believe and stand on. Listen to Paul again. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. NIV says, we are hard pressed on every side, but we're not crushed out. Look at your neighbor. One point one. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Just say, pressure and problems will not defeat us. Y'all didn't say that like you believed that. Look on the other side. Put your finger up. Say, pressure and problems will not defeat us. Trouble. That Greek word for trouble is threbo. Come on, come on God. Which means to be pressed. Yeah. As if you're walking through a crowd and people are surrounding Teach. you. You are literally being pressed upon. Just y'all remember the lady with the issue of blood? Yeah. When she was yeah. pressing through the crowd just yeah. to touch right. the hem of this garment. That's the same kind. Of, sometimes you can be pressed on every side. Even, right. even in church, you can get pressed. Right. Even, even in your community. In your family, you can get trapped. Sometimes, y'all want to say, sometimes folk in my own family get on my nerve. <laughs> Amen. And they just press on me. Press on me. I know, I know I'm going to date my 
my sister, but y'all remember, talk to the hands. To the hands. <laughs> Trouble on every side. The scripture says that the pressures of life may squeeze us, but we're not utterly crushed. That's right. The pressures and the problems of life, when they come sometimes, believe it or not, they make you stronger. Yeah. Some attacks and some pressure may really come from the devil. Let me say that again. May really come from the devil. But sometimes we get in spots because of choices. That we made. The devil ain't had nothing to do with it, Flip Wilson. Hey, hey, hey. Sometimes God will permit problems to come to help fulfill your divine plan. That's right. I know I'm talking to somebody. Sometimes problems come so that God can. Fulfill your divine plan. Yeah. Problems come, number one, to direct us. Sometimes God has the light of fire under us to get us to move. Problems often point us in a new direction and motivate us to change. God will allow some situations to continue to foster to get your attention. Problems come to direct us. And even in painful situations, they may help change our directions. Sometimes God allows problems to come to inspect us. Look at your neighbor and say, inspect us. Inspect us. Do y'all, I, I, I've done this, but I, I got to do it for greater Bell. But y'all know what this is? T-Bag. That's a what? T-Bag. Amen, Gringo. It's a tea bag. Amen? Amen. It's a little green tea bag. <laughs> Amen, Green Neville Memorial. <laughs> and we could put Christian on this tea bag. We could put class leader on the tea bag. We could put trustee. We could put pastor on the tea bag. We could put shipman on the tea bag. But you know, you won't find out what's in us till you put them in some hot water. Oh, well, somebody say amen. Oh, you get in some hot water. Get your back up against the wall. And we'll find out what's on the inside. Some of you thought you left that language alone. But you get in a hot situation. Oh, somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. I like that, sister. I like that. Amen. Amen. God will send problems to direct us and inspect us, but then He'll also allow problems to come to correct us. And believe it or not, some problems will protect us. But most of all, all of these things come to perfect us. In the midst of all of my struggles, in the midst of all of your tribulations, know that God is working a miracle in you. Paul said it best. He said, we glory in our tribulations. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Patience experience. Experience hope. Hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto all of us. So we may be troubled on every side, but we're not distressed. Number two, he says we are perplexed, but not in despair. Look at your neighbor. You're going to do it two more times. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Look at your say confusion, confusion will not discourage us. Will not discourage us. Have you been in a situation and life throws you a curveball? Yeah. I'll say amen. Amen. Sometimes we face circumstances that are confusing because we honestly don't know what we need to do. Paul says in Romans 8, 26, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself makes intercession for us 
with groanings that cannot be uttered. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will intercede for you and will whisper just what you need right at the time that you need it. My wife found out that she had cancer and immediately we recovered from the shock. She got a foundational scripture and I hope she doesn't mind me lifting it up. Her foundational scripture was Isaiah 41.10. She said she stood on this every day. Fear thou not for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. Don't be confused. Don't be perplexed. For I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yet I will help thee. I will uphold thee with my right hand. She refused to be confused. She denied discouragement. And she walked that thing out. My wife is cancer free. Y'all say amen. amen. She walked it out. She, she walked it out. Amen. She walked it out. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Paul says, number three, I got to go quick. I got to go quick. I see some of y'all looking at your watch. Got to go quick. Look. <laughs> Paul says, persecuted but not forsaken. Number three, look at your neighbor two more times. <laughs> Say, opposition will not stop us. Opposition will not stop us. Mm. The Greek word persecuted means to pursue. Sometimes, like a hunter pursues the game. This word conjures up movie scenes where the hero knows that he's being followed. Y'all ever watch the movies and... You almost want to be talking to the folk in the movies. <laughs> don't don't y'all act like that. Yeah. You know, you, you know, you know they're getting ready to get crushed. Yeah. <laughs> I said, no, don't go, don't go. Yeah. Yeah. Am I by myself? Am I here? Yeah. Forgive me for being a little bit racial, but then sometimes when I watch those movies, I say, nobody but white folk would have done that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, sister, brother, no, we wouldn't be going on. Don't open that door. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come back to that in a few minutes. Paul knew about persecution. He, he knew about being pursued. He was beaten 39 strikes five different times. Beaten with rods, stoned and left to, they left to die. Shipwrecked three times, robbed, falsely accused. He knew what it was. And Paul was a black man. Y'all say amen. amen. I, I'm going to say it again. Paul was a black man. Amen. He was mistaken as an Egyptian in the book of Acts. Y'all just say amen. amen. But he said, he lived this example. Ain't going to let nobody turn me around. Ain't going to let nobody turn me around. Ain't going to let nobody turn me around. I'm going to keep on walking. Yes. Keep on talking. Yes. Walking to the promised land. Yes. Paul knew finally. He said we're struck down but not destroyed. Look at your neighbor one last time. Hallelujah. <laughs> Say hard knocks. Will not destroy us. Will not destroy us. Look on the other side and say, that's you too. That's you too. You too. <laughs> if you live long enough, <clears throat> you're going to get sucker punched every now and then. Am I preaching to anybody in here? Amen. 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 You're going to get sucker punched. <laughs> My wife and I went to Atlanta, Georgia to see her mother's sister who was in intensive care. Drove back, picked her mother up on Thursday night. Friday morning, woke up and found out that the aunt that we went to see in intensive care, her son had been killed in a car accident when we came back to show. His funeral was yesterday. So I'm preaching out of my own pain. 
But I want you to know, even at the service, you start recognizing that God is still in control. Yeah. Yeah. It's, in spite of it all. Look at your neighbor say, in spite of it all. God still got your back. He still got your back. Y'all weren't supposed to say that, but that's all right. Amen. 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 When you get sucker punched and you get cast down by something that's a sudden emergency, an unforeseen incident, a late night phone call after 2 30, when crisis shows up out of nowhere, catastrophe and the earthquake of trouble knocks and rocks your world. See, most of us, y'all bear with me just a few minutes, most of us can handle moderate trouble. Amen. 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 We can handle a cranky boss, Amen. sick child, uh -huh. a nosy neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we know what to do when we get in a fender bender. When the electricity gets cut off. Yeah. We can scrimp a few days when the money gets tight. Yeah. We know when we're sick, when it's time to go to a doctor. Yeah. Because we know into each life a little rain must fall. But what happens when the rain turns into a thunderstorm? Jesus. And the thunderstorm turns into a flood. Yes. And the flood just comes and begins to reshape your whole experience. Mike Tyson said this famously. He said, everyone got a plan till they get punched in the mouth. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Everybody thinks they know where it's going until all of a sudden life just happens. Then you have to recover. Anyone can sing when the sun is shining. But can you sing when it's midnight and you don't know what's going to happen the next day? You, you got to have some faith somewhere. How do you make it through the pressure, the confusion, the opposition, the hard knocks? Scripture says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When your attitude and your faith is right, class leaders, members of greater Bethel, everybody needs to know that you can be strong when your enemies are trying to be on your heels. Amen. You know what I'm excited about? I'm excited about this little watch right here. I don't know what that kind of watch is. Uh, it's a Timex. Hey, Amen. I'm a Timex. Oh, yes, you are. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Say, are you a Timex or not? Are you a Timex? You ought to be able to take a living and keep on taking it. Put an address in, 
I'm talking about why I never give up. Now, I'm talking about why I stay fired up because I never give up. Ways. Ways. I put the address in. Sister Elder, I got and I put it in my car. My car, I mean, my, my phone is synced to my car, and I can, I, so I put the address in, and I'm just driving along. And all of a sudden, the, the car said, Police are here. 